Metro Manila is now under Alert Level 2 beginning Friday, November 5 until November 21. Presidential spokesman Hari Roque on Thursday night, November 4, says the government's pandemic task force decided to de-escalate the capital region's status amid the downtrend in COVID-19 cases. The new alert level means restrictions in the country's capital region are much more relaxed. Alert level 2 means there are no age-based mobility restrictions in the metro. Alert level 2 also allows an increased capacity for businesses and activities such as restaurant dine-in, beauty salons and the like, and religious activities, among other things. Intrazonal and interzonal movement is allowed under alert level 2. Local government units may also impose further restrictions as long as they are not stricter than higher alert levels. The Commission on Higher Education on Friday says limited face-to-face -face classes up to 50% in all degree programs are now allowed in areas under Alert Level 2, subject to certain conditions. More groups will file petitions before the Commission on Elections to try and stop the candidacy of presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Lawyer Howard Calleja announces this in a news conference Friday, November 5, alongside prospective petitioners Romel Bautista and civic leader Carol Araulio. Calleja says he will be assisting the petitioners in his personal legal capacity and not as a convener of Isambayan. We find that we are not the nuisance, but actually Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos is the nuisance. He is, uh, his filing is void ab initio, his COC is void. Therefore, he is the nuisance candidate in this situation. Calleja says they will file a motion to intervene in the petition to cancel Marcos Jr.'s Certificate of Candidacy, or COC, filed earlier this week by a group of civic leaders represented by Ted Te, former Supreme Court spokesperson. The petition to cancel Marcos Jr.'s COC says he is ineligible to run for public office because of a conviction to file income tax returns in 1997, made final in 2001. The petition also argues that according to the tax code, if the offender is a public official, he is perpetually disqualified from running for public office. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte is now considering running for senator, a month after announcing his retirement from politics. Presidential spokesperson Hari Roque says Friday, November 5, there is no decision yet. This is not the first time Duterte said he will retire. In 2015, when he was Davao City Mayor, he said he will retire from public life for good, but he ran for president the following year. Duterte initially accepted PDP Laban's nomination to run as the party's vice president. But in a surprise move, eight-turned Senator Bong Go filed his certificate of candidacy as the party's vice presidential bet on October 2. That was when Duterte said he was retiring from politics following lukewarm support from the public. A survey said 6 in 10 Filipinos believe that Duterte's contemplated vice presidential run is unconstitutional. But senatorial candidates in the PDP Laban wing led by Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi are willing to give way for Duterte should he decide to run. The last day for parties to come up with substitute candidates is on Monday, November 15. The Senate orders the arrest of ex-budget undersecretary Lloyd Christopher Lau for skipping the chamber's hearings on the government's anomalous pandemic contracts. Senate President Tito Soto confirms he already signed the arrest order against Lau, who is the former chief of the Budget Department's Procurement Service. Senators on Thursday, November 4, cited Lau in contempt for snubbing the Senate Blue Ribbon Panel hearing for the fourth time. According to the arrest order, Lau will be detained until such time he submits the subpoena documents or purges himself of contempt. Lau was at the helm of the PSDBM when it awarded Farmily most of its contracts. Farmily bagged over 10 billion pesos in contracts with the Philippine government. Grammy-winning pop star Ariana Grande will soon be defying gravity as the next Glinda the Good Witch in the upcoming Wicked film. Grande will be starring alongside Emmy-winning The Color Purple actress Cynthia Erivo, who will be portraying the Wicked Witch of the West, Elphaba Batrop. Both stars announced the news on Instagram Friday, November 5. Crazy Rich Asians director John M. Chu will direct the movie adaptation of the hit Broadway musical. The Wicked film is set to start production in the summer of 2022 in the UK.